Yeah, on the next match, on the next uh, first to seven, we are going to have Mick against Captain Anton. And I know Mick from uh, uh, different uh, tournaments around Europe. They are uh, a very good uh, RAM player, placing fairly high, not breaking top eight too often, but very close there all the time. I'm not too familiar with Captain Atom. Do you have any lore? Uh, I unfortunately do not. I only got properly active in the EU scene like the year before COVID hit. Uh, I, I had been traveling previously for that, but a lot of names kind of fly over my head. Essentially, it's whoever I wound up drinking with, with the people I got to know. So, <laughs> Isn't you know, that always the case, right? <laughs> you get when you're Irish, Irish, it's definitely the case, yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, Captain Adam apparently has played the uh, gu uh, Guilty Gear for like 15 years uh, and mm -hmm. a very old school player. And they're playing Angie, despite what the graphics might show you. Uh, an Angie player? Angie is... It's very, it's very strange, strange in Strive, Strive I find, compared to his pl game plan game in, uh, in Plus R. In Plus R, his entire game plan is just, I'm going to put you in the mix, the mix and you're going to block Butterfly, and then I'm going to put, 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 put you back in the mix. Yep. Um, and in this and one, this Butterfly, Butterfly seems, seems less, less to be a core component of the game plan, because knockdowns are slightly harder to pull off. Or rather, the Butterfly just doesn't come out quick enough to be as viable. Also, Red Butterfly is missing. Yeah. And another thing is around the butterfly. I think a lot of people are unwilling to manually adjust the butterfly in situation like when they have their opponent cornered, right? I was uh, I was coaching uh, an Angie player and they said, oh, I cannot do butterfly uh, in the corner because if I do it, then it's going to whiff because of the uh, lack of pushback. I said, no, you just have to adjust the timing. You delay the butterfly a lot in the in in the sense that you know it's still going to eat meat in the corner because you delayed it and you're still gonna have the mix, but you have to adjust the timing. You kind of mm -hmm. have to take that mix up a little bit differently, right? So there's a uh, the squirts and things like that. Now the character does certainly uh, struggle, but I think a lot a lot a lot of people have moved uh, very fast away from him because uh, they're simply characters that get more and you can do like get more reward while doing you know less smart stuff or more simple game plans and more uh oppressive game plans and so on so i don't think mm -hmm. the character is bad in itself i just think it needs to be explored you know as you used to do like 10 years ago <laughs> no, I, I don't think any character in this game is bad, except potentially Faust, just because they really kneecapped a lot of what uh, his core tools were, and people haven't adjusted back into like improving what he can and can't do. For instance, like every single character in the game has got to punish for a 2k bomb or 2k mix, mix, mix. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a big punish, like full anti-air combo kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, I'm going... If you do to uh, jump 2k into bag, I think every every character aside from the two ones without the forward dash, such as Potankin and Nago, can just go behind him and punish him. Oh yeah, like, just do big damage. Uh, so I'm guessing that the Rams player, Ram player's name isn't actually Falcom Shill, uh, but Play Tales. Um, what's the name again on them? Uh, Mick. Mick? Yeah. Alright. Uh, my prediction on this is Ram trying to establish as much distance as she can against Angie, and once she gets the distance, she probably wins? But it's just a case of, will Angie let the distance be established? Yeah, and that's the thing, like, if you keep on reading these buttons, like, you know, the jumping ass, the, the close ass, you can sort of dance through and, you know, then punish the recovery, but it's, it's not as easy as it sounds, for sure, because of the, the range she has, okay? Yeah, the other issue is like the range that you start wanting to dance from is also the range that she can then start just swinging S at you afterwards. Like, Ram gets to play this reactive rather than proactive, which is a really big strength of hers, just from... Oh, that was excellent run of throw, because it was between the sword and the blow-up. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Makes so smart. But she can also do 2k to these, right? If they try and... Uh, uh, sorry, tech the throw, you can uh, open them up like that. But right mm -hmm. now, Atom at, uh, at the, the ropes... And the ropes keep on exploding. <laughs> so, okay. not a great place to be. Yep. Alright, establishing a go in early, but Ram gets that little bit of extra space. JH, hard to punish. Mm -hmm. There's the spin through. Punishes the attempt at a punish. Okay, there's the knockdown. Unfortunately, didn't enforce uh, uh, the, the post knockdown on Nagiha. Never mind, don't try and fireball from there. Okay. No extension, why? 
Okay, they don't use the mirror to cover themselves, keeping themselves at minus eight, minus eight. So of course they try and press buttons after, and they get anticipated. Minus seven, Ooh. minus eight, minus seven, I think. The Nagiha. And Mick takes the first round on that. Yeah, first game, very convincingly. Right, well, you predicted <laughs> staying away from uh, yep. sort of the danger range and uh, using a keep away game when uh, the range was reset. They were trying, you know, to do double jump in the JHSs, which is so hard to deal with for a lot of characters. Yep. Uh, the most characters' uh, six Ps actually need to be timed very differently and specifically to deal with it, so that you still get the inv invincibility to get around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this is also something that I explain to people. You don't have to 6P. You can also like take a double back dash and remove yourself from the situation and then either force her to block or punish her on uh, recovery. It's not extremely easy, but it's also, it's also not undoable. So you can think that way. What a block on the charge D. Yeah, it was excellent. It was a really, really smart kind of use by Captain Adam to use the butterfly in neutral, then force a 50-50 with it still active. Yeah. I Although think... Mick has just got really good reactions and is really closing it out here. To be honest, I think that inadvertently Mick has been used, has been uh, helped by the slowdown <laughs> of the whole thing, where they could see sort of happening and react and sort of yep. uh, calculate everything. I don't know if uh, the same setup without the slowdown, say, you know, with the PRC triggered from outside, they would have been able to block. But right now, excellent um, extension into the corner, sorry, into the shift stage, positive bonus. Really demanding that uh, Captain Adam respect that JH, like jump forward, jump back, JH on the way down. Cool. Whoa. That was very strange. The gold burst to try and get away from the the ram super, I guess. Oh, he gets hit by this. Because right, you can just punish the punish it on block if she doesn't have the other uh, bar to make it safe. So wondering why the uh, maybe they wanted to like sort of bank hard on uh, punishing the super with the gold burst and getting the full uh, full meter. It's certainly an interesting decision there. Mm -hmm. And we can see that JH from Ram also coming back into play here, just being a real threat, keeping Captain Adam down. Um, well, Captain Adam getting really, really cheeky with these neutral butterflies with Ram running right at him. Like, I don't know if I can fully get on board with it, but, like, it, it means that you do have to wind up respecting stuff at mid-range that you normally wouldn't have to. Although, think... playing Ram, I don't think you have to, actually. Yeah, yeah no. That's kill. Calvados? I don't know. Mortal Bado's gonna do it, the, the job, uh, well, mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, I think it's because uh, they're trying to stay at the range where the spin is like not really a big threat. And the Captain Adam is like, okay, you don't want to take that range, I'm going to take the butterfly. But it's not really working for them right now. Another really intelligent use of the wall break super there to get that hit. Oh, God, she gets so much damage in the corner. Mm. And she just brings you to the corner for free. And oh. she super due to how you know how, how good the meter build is and even now you're we are not seeing the actual run pressure because i think uh, captain atom is uh, trying to challenge a lot of situations rather than taking blocks but when you do take blocks she puts you in this into this very very hard to escape and very long block strings and if she has a positive bonus oh boy good luck getting out of there good luck like slowing her down like, she can just go with as many layers of mix-ups as she wants, and then you think you block them all, and then she just purple RC grabs you. Exactly. And you're like, ah. Oh, or, no. she does, uh, or she does the special overhead and PRC rapid cancel JA, JP to open you up again. Yep. Like, Ram has got layers and layers of pressure. It's not that she... Like, Ram has got really good buttons that are really rewarding to push, but Ram also has depth, like, frightening mm. amounts of depth when she starts getting going. Yeah, absolutely. He's a very, very good character. We have seen people bounce out of that corner four times in a row now. I'm very confused about why the left corner is bugged. <laughs> or at least cursed. I've heard about, like, player one or player two advantage, but I didn't really explore it. I don't think there's a huge amount. There's definitely... I know there's some stuff about how wall damage starts stacking the second that you hit someone at a certain oh. distance. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really sure about the whole thing. Wall break is an extremely mysterious mechanic. There's the A to D stuff we were talking about, spinning through, but doesn't get the full conversion there. Oof. Oh, oh. Barcy's out of it. And now we're in the corner, and this could be kill. Pavados. Ooh, oh, not quite. Shouldn't kill. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. but they, I was they fairly heavily scaled. 
yeah, they're probably content with the just just with the advantage. And right now, Mika looking untouchable, literally untouchable. Yeah, that is that is the nature of the matchup. If you if you try to escape sword pressure and you don't have the right tools, the right spacing, or the right timing to escape sword pressure, you die. That's just it. Yeah. Like there are specific ways that every character has to use to try to escape. A lot of them are uh, dash forward and block. Some of them are air dash up and block. Potemkin gets to be sad. And so does Gold Lewis. Those are two characters that, as big bodies, just have to die when they get hit into ram pressure. Oh, and the grab to finish it out. Excellent play from Mick there. Mm -hmm. I think Nago actually ends up struggling too, right? Oh yeah, Nago, with zero mobility options, just has to block. Okay. Yeah, um, the only thing he can do is a challenge with the 7 frame Diverto Super, but right now Captain Atom, with the pressure in the corner, Ends up cornering uh, themselves though, so yeah, not great. What a, for future reference, if you're getting cornered by a ram, just accept that she's got to break the wall, and if you try to burst, you're going to lose your burst. Yeah. So don't don't corner yourself for mix-ups. This is another thing yeah. that like uh, people need to be aware. Uh, positional advantage in fighting games is so strong, especially against the character that can make you block once and then keep you in the block swing for like 30, 60 seconds if you don't know how to FD the 2k, 2d and challenge the gaps. Ram is one of these characters that's super threatening though because FDing her doesn't push her back enough to like stop her pressure. Most characters like once you FD them out, uh, they actually have to try and get back in. The only yeah. two exceptions being Ram and uh, Sol's FS because it dashes them forward a little bit and keeps them even more plush when you FD them. Uh, on the 2k 2d specifically, on that specific like block string I was talking about, actually the 2k 2d makes it so the the sword toss is not a 3 frame gap and it enlarges the gap. Still you gotta take, you know, uh, sort of a guess game there. If they're gonna do the 5k, you can anticipate it. In this case you can dance through with uh, um, Angie, but in general, yeah, it's not a, a case of having the hugest advantage. It's kind of making it possible from an impossible. Oh, oh, through both of the sword, but ends up going back into them. I wonder if it was a... Wow. Yeah, Mick right now just yeah. sort of playing one-player mode. I'm sorry, yeah, he just Mick. playing one-player mode. Like, what we saw there was him doing spin, and then Mick doing sword into the spin to trigger it, and then H-sword to hit him after the spin had already triggered, and then forcing him back into the explosion. Like... This is really excellent uh, space control by Mick in terms of the smaller screen size that's afforded to you in Strive. Because mm -hmm. in Plus R, for instance, or even in Exert, the screen was much wider. Going coast to coast was that much harder. In this, mm -hmm. there's maybe two full screens worth of space, give or take. Yeah. If even that. Right, now mm -hmm. Captain Atom finding the wall break. No advantage here in terms of a plus frame, but definitely an advantage in terms of meter building. Uh, one thing that I want to point out in this matchup, uh, not not a death yet, um, yeah, is that Captain Atom is uh, over relying on uh, grounded spins to try and get past the zoning, and they're never sort of like hard reading the far S with the uh, instant air dash into button, which uh, Angie can do. So also that right, if you keep your uh, offense or neutral uh, kind of mono dimensional, of course uh, a good player like Mick is going to adapt to it. So it's about using all the characters' tools and all their abilities, and right now we're not really, we're not getting that feel for Angie off Captain Adam here, unfortunately. But that's also possible just because Mick has played against so many other Angies that they know the spacing, they've labbed the matchup, and again, matchup knowledge counts for a lot, even when you're in a, like a six-four matchup. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Ooh. Very good patience there from Mick to get out of the corner against uh, Captain Adam, like literally just. Back and forth, slightly changing the space, adjusting for whatever needs to come out, and then just jumping over to re-establish exiting. Uh, yeah. And a lot of respect for that neutral butterfly still. Uh, also, the jump on the butterfly is because if they don't do the, the Fujin, you can just block and avoid being put into a mix-up at any point. You can even like force yourself to take the hit to avoid being stuck into another butterfly mix-up. And yeah, the that five. Was an excellent PRC. That was an excellent PRC. Extremely good presence of mind and really good reactions. Like, yeah. literally knew that the next hit was going to kill, knew that they got that burst back from the hit before. PRC, PRC waited out. out. And that's, yeah, for sure. That's seven out of
Uh, yeah, that was like um, brutal. I'm not gonna lie. I think mm -hmm. uh, it was a combination of uh, Mick uh, knowing uh, the matchup and uh, Captain Atom only like challenging in a certain way. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes missing their uh, extensions or mix, mi missing their setups. Uh, things such as not keeping the butterfly set up airtight with the Fujin to then take you know the advantage on the second hit or the, uh, or the butterfly, which actually becomes a crow, right? <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. So uh, I think that the, the, there were several factors there. And mm -hmm. uh, especially at the beginning, Captain Atom was over-reliant on trying to uh, sort of challenge some gaps in instead of taking blocks and you know learning the habits. Mm -hmm. Like, like there, there is, is something, something to be said. said. Like, like we've talked we've before about like the the, the length, length sets that, that we have here. That it's first, first to seven that you can get up to thirteen game. Yeah, up to thirteen, yeah, up to 13 game games with it. You, you can, can afford, afford to take your first couple of games to just play more patiently, take a look at what your opponent's doing, feel out their defense, feel out their offense. Then maybe two games in, start like testing the waters, seeing how much further you can go. This isn't a first to three or a best of five kind of. Sorry, first to. Best of three, best, best of five situation, situation where you have to go ham, ham from the very beginning, beginning and mm -hmm. on the on fly adjust, adjust as necessary. necessary. You, can you have the time and space to be able to take a breath and be like, all right, all right they're hitting me with this, they're doing this, this, this is what they like to do. Uh, if, if I'm, I'm in this situation, situation I'm just going to observe what they do. I might just take a throw or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You have a lot more time to adapt. You have time to try wild things, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we saw it with the previous set where Kashkabald was playing a, sort of a certain way until they realized that, you know, we're down five games. And then they find out that Rayoli wasn't willing to block the flash kicks. <laughs> so they just kind of banked on that, and that's the way that they, they opened, opened their, their pressure, pressure a lot. They opened their... Aggression. aggression they opened, opened their, their setups, setups there. They were able to challenge a lot of the game plan of Rayoli. It's like, wait, this is actually working, even though it's wild, right? So... You have definitely a lot of space to work with. Um... Mm -hmm.